Hey everyone, Nitesh this side. Hope you are doing good. So let's start with the question. So the question is one and zeros. Okay, so what is given to us? We have given an array of binary strings STRs and we have also given two integer M and N. So what we have to do, we have to return the size of the largest subset of STRs such that there are at most M zeros and N ones in the subset. Okay. So we are given a string str. Uh, this is a binary array. Okay, and we are given a m and n. So m will represent zeros and n will represent one. So we need to find out the subset of this given string, like which is the larger subset, which will like all the string in that subset will have like at most m and n. So that will not cross m and n. Okay, and set X is a subset of set Y if all the element of X are also element of Y. Okay, so let's understand with an example. Okay, let's see. So we have given a M. Okay, so we have given a M and an N. So we have M equal to 5 N and N equal to 3. Okay, and we have given this string. So we need to find out that subset which will have the so we have to find a subset uh which will have your like at most like at most m and n and m will represent zeros and one n will represent one so if i give you the like tell you the output for this so for this the output is your one zero then this zero 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 one then this one and then this zero so if you count a one in this so this is one then this is two then this is three so which is less than or equal to your n similarly if you see the zero so this is one zero this is second third fourth and fifth and zero is also less than or equal to five so subset is basically like you it's the difference between subset and subsequence or your substring is like in substring or in subset we have to maintain the ordering but in subset we can take any element in between either we can skip from between so as you can see we are not considering this let's say we'll consider this only so let's say we take this in an example so we have one 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 zero zero one okay now we have take four one inside this so then we can only take one so let's say we take this so this is also the valid output but like your zeros is also less than three less than equal to three but you can see the length for this is two but for this if we take the largest output we have an equal to four okay so if you can think this it's just a question like a knapsack so we just have to either accept it or reject it okay so we initial we have m equal to 5 and n equal to 3 so we have two option either we will accept it or either we will reject it okay so what is given to us so we have given uh, 10 to us so first we will start from here so we have this 10 okay so if we accept this that means our your m will reduce by 1 so m will become 4 and your n will become similarly here your m will become so m if you reject it you don't take the limit so m will remain same as it is and n is also same okay so after this we have again the second string so we'll start from here so we have this option 0 0 0 1 and here we also have same option 0 0 0 1 okay so we again have two option either we will or whenever we accept it we do plus one okay so that we will count uh, basically which string we have taken or we have rejected okay so if we take it with do plus one otherwise we'll not do any will not do anything so if we take it our m will reduce by three so m will now become one and n will become one okay and if we don't take it m will remain as it is and your n equal to two okay now here we again have two option either we will take it or not take it so if we take this we have uh, your m will become 2 and your n will become 1 similarly if you don't take it this will remain as it m 5 and 3 okay now again we have option so again the next string is this so this is triple one zero zero one okay and this is also triple one zero zero one and this is also triple one zero one oh okay 
similarly triple one zero one so we are at here okay so if we take this we again have two option if we take this our m will become one two three four so that will become minus three because we have taken oh sorry zero so it will become minus one because it is two and this n will become your one minus four which is minus three okay now you can see this is in negative so that means we are going something wrong so we will not take we will not go further similarly we if let's say we will not take this so our m will become one and n also one okay so here we also have two option so like we just have to solve this problem accept or reject okay let's solve this completely so let's say we'll accept it so we'll do plus one okay m equal to one so we are at here so we have two option for so this is our one okay so either we will take it so if we take it m will remain one and n will become zero and in this case m equal to one and n equal to one okay now we have option of uh, we'll move further we have zero 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 either we will take it so let's say we'll take this so m will become zero and n equal to zero and we do plus one okay so whenever your m equal to or n equal to zero we just return from here okay so if you just return it so you can see this is plus one it will come here plus two then it will return here this is not this is zero only so this is only plus two till here now here we return so this will become plus one at this will plus three and from here we return it's plus four okay so you can see we are getting the maximum output from this so we just have to do every time maximum of either we will accept it or reject it so it's just a simple zero one naps and either we will take it or either we will just skip it so let's write a code for this it's just a simple implementation of zero with napsec so what we need we need a recursion function so let's just create a new function return solve and we'll pass this strings we'll pass m we'll pass n and we'll start from zero basically we we will say like you have to start from here then you have to move further then you have to move further okay so what we need to write in recursion int solve string strs int m int n and your int index okay then what we need to do we have two option okay before two option we need to count the zeroth and one inside this so let's just count the zeroth first zero equal to count zero and we'll pass the current element okay and we can calculate the one from it so we just do zero basically reduce zero from the given string so strs index dot length minus zero so we got the one remaining one okay now what we need to do uh, we have two option either we will accept it or either will reject or oh, let's just skip okay so what we need to return in the answer we just need to do math dot max so whatever give me maximum i will take it so whatever like after skipping i get the maximum i will take that answer accept or skip okay so what we need to do we just need to check in the accept case if r m basically that is zero should be greater or equal to zero and and r n should be greater or equal to one then then and only we can accept if let's say the remaining m and n are smaller so we like it will become negative we don't have to call the recursion for that so we just do accept equal to we call the recursion function solve we'll pass the string array and we'll pass the remaining zeros now m minus zero and we'll do n minus one and we'll do index plus one okay and we'll do plus one because we have accepted otherwise we just do skip equal to solve string we pass same m will space same n and we just do index plus one okay so whatever the maximum just return that okay now we need to add the base case so base case is if your 
so if your index reaches to the end of the string array or your m plus n becomes zero then at that point you just need to do return zero from here you don't need to do anything uh i think yeah we have to write a count z function so this is just a simple counting a zero from a string so string s int zero to equal to zero for care to care array and we just check if our c is zero then increment zero and just return the zero from here okay uh, i think we have covered all the cases let's run it okay let's see so this is accepted let's submit it okay it is taking time oh so we got the tle okay let's see the constraints 600 okay so as you can see this constraint are not bigger but for smaller constraints it's working fine but when our mnn is increasing it is giving a tle and why it is giving it because if you can see the recursion tree we are solving the same problem again and again okay so there might be a situation like when you solve for m equal to 4 and equal to 2 there might be from reject you got the same problem again so what we can do is we will use the property of dp so basically memorization the same answer okay so what we will do we can see like what are the values that are changing okay so if you can see the recursion called m is changing your n is changing and your index is changing so three things are changing okay so if we store that these three parameters and their result in a variable and whenever the same parameters come again and if we store if we see like that is stored already we can get from the uh, like we don't need to call again the recursion and solve that part so what we will do we create our dp and this dp we will be three dimensional so because three things are changing so dp and dp equal to new int and we'll give m basically we do m plus one because in end array it will be zero the indexing so n plus one and we need to pass trace dot length this we can pass same as it is because indexing here it start from zero okay so what we need to check if your dp of m comma n and your index is greater than zero then you don't have to solve it you just return dp of m n and index and in the last whatever the answer you are getting you need to store it so dp of m your n and int equal to this okay let's i think yeah looks good to me let's run it okay there is one mistake oh so we missed the semicolon let's run it okay this is accepted let's submit it yeah so our code is submitted if you can see we are again taking a extra memory like we can also optimize it uh, like how can we optimize it if you can see what we are doing it uh, we are every time counting zero like we are counting the same if I show you in the recursion this zero zero one if we count at only once then why we have to count it again for this frequency similarly we are counting this triple one zero one four four possible outcomes one two three four so if my tree is nested you can see the call for the same string uh, come again and again so we can basically remove this from here so instead of passing this string array we will pass the frequency array so we'll pass we'll create a count array and this will use the same length of strs dot length and this will have two basically your zeros will represent how many zeros it is have and one will represent how many one it is have so we just do for int and 
for string s2 strs we just copy or cut this from here we don't need it now which what we will do we will just pass the s inside this count s and we'll calculate the one from here okay so let me just take a ith variable int i equal to zero so what we do we just do i of zero equal to zero and count of i of one equal to one and we just do i plus plus okay and in this we will pass the this counter instead of this string so let me just change it like it's up to you if you have to optimize you can submit your question till here also but i think it's better if you optimize it so now we just do count of index of zero so this will represent zero and similarly count of index one and similarly we have to reduce here also count of index zero and it will be count of index of one and we need to pass the count instead of strs okay yeah looks good to me let's run it okay oh oh sorry it will be count dot length now run it so this is accepted let's submit it so you can see like the memory difference between this uh, and your code is also becoming faster so if i just open both of them so this is the previous one uh, it's taking time yeah and let me just open this also okay so for the previous one if you can see this is taking 231.6 mb and runtime is also 641 millisecond and it's 9.7 percent only increasing but if you can see it is taking only 88.1 and your runtime is also reduced from this so yeah you can optimize this yeah hope you like it thank you for watching the video and do join the telegram if you have in doubt any concern thank you